Hello wonderful people, it's Wild here. Today I'll be showing you how to build this flower pot house, complete with a big purple bloom. This whimsical build is extremely spacious but still cozy and it has a magical feel to it. So let's get building. Now keep in mind that the purple materials, as well as the amethyst, are for the top of the flower. And every flower is going to be a little bit different, so I recommend getting um, a few more blocks than what I've listed here, so that way you can play around with the textures. Also keep in mind that you'll have 12 blocks of terracotta left over, as that allows us to build the pot and then break in the windows, which makes building this build a whole lot easier. Here is the outline for today's build. You can see it is a circle with a section cut off at the front for the door. It's 13 blocks across and I've got the centre marked in there with a stripped dark oak log. You can see that there is a 5 block gap between the centre and the outer edge here and that the gap at the front is 3 blocks in length. You can imagine that the side of the circle will continue along these 3 blocks here. For the first layer of our build we'll need terracotta and moss blocks and I'm going to build up 3 high. As I'm going around, I'm going to start adding in some moss blocks in some natural patterns like this. Now I find it easiest to add in my moss blocks as I go, but if you're having trouble creating these randomized patterns, you can always build the whole thing out of terracotta and then go in with some moss afterwards. It's also important whether you're adding your moss in now or later to take a step back when you're adding it in to make sure you like the pattern. Okay, I'm going to add another bit of moss in here, I think. And then I'll continue around with my terracotta. Just following the outline of the circle. And then I'm going to have a little bit more here. And fill in the rest. Now let's take a step back. I'm happy with that, I think. That's good. And then we'll check around this side. I might extend it out one more that way. Alright, so that's the first layer done. The rest of the pot is just made out of terracotta. And we'll start our next layer by building out one. And then building across five. Now, you can imagine that at the front here, there would have been a wall coming up in this section. That we could place this next five wide spot on top of but since we've got a door here we've got that free so we've used a placeholder block to build out i'm then going to build one on top of that and come one out in the center and i'll do the same thing on the other three sides remembering now i could just build straight on top of this three wide gap To fill in the corners, I'll just build two high on top of everything. And you can see our circle's going to slowly start flaring out to give us that pot shape. We'll go up in another layer of two now. This time I'm going to build out three on top of this one block here and go two high. And I'll do that on the other sides. Oh, I missed my block there. I can add that in now though. And to fill in the corners, I'm going to start by building some upside down L's facing towards the corner like this, and then some right way up ones to fill in the gap. So it should look like this. And I'll do that on all of the sides. Let's have a look at our circle from above now. Our next layer will be three blocks high and I'm going to start by building five across these three wide flat sections. Breaking a circular build like this into flat parts and corner parts and working in layers can really help to simplify the process. So once I've built across my five, I'm building a 2x2 two two square on either side and then filling in the gap so there is a little dip like this. And I can then come one forward with my block. And then I'll do this on the other sides as well. The other thing about this pot is that we want the whole thing to be symmetrical. So if you're getting a bit lost in your build, check in on the other sides that you've got and just make sure that it is all matching. Now 
Now that we've got the sides in, we can fill in the corners. So for these blocks, I'll start by building up three high. And then for these two, I'll build up three high and then fill in this two high gap here. If you're enjoying today's tutorial and like to see more builds like it, make sure you consider subscribing. It really helps me out and I'd love to have you part of my community. Here's what we've got so far for our pot. Now we can work on the final layer before we add in the rim of our pot. And I'll start by building a 3x3 square on top of each of these one high blocks here. Now I'll begin filling in my corners. So to do this, I'm going to start on this one that is one block in like this and I'll build up one high and then I'm going to come in and go up another two high. So I'm creating these little L shapes facing away from the corner. Then I'll fill in this gap by building up three high and then coming forward two. Just like that. And then to fill in the corner, I'll just build straight up three high. So that is the base of our pot done. Now we need to add the rim, but before we do that, let's have a look at the circle from above. Check that your circle looks like this. So it should go three blocks at the side here, followed by two and three ones, two, three, two, and so forth, all the way around the circle. For the rim of our pot, we'll actually be starting on the corners. So what I want to do here is I'm gonna build out one so we're filling in this gap between this one wide block and these two blocks here on either side. And then I want to zigzag between them. So I'm creating a like a long W shape. And I'm going to do that on the other sides as well. And you can check that you've built this right because it should kind of look like it's sticking out two blocks when you look from underneath. For the rest, I'm going to just build out one on top of the kind of gap here, so it sticks out one. Now that we've got the base for our room, we need to make it taller so I'm gonna start on the flat sides by building out five like this and then adding one more on top just like that I've got my sides in now to fill in these bits I'm going to build a two by two square on top of this block here and then I'll just fill in the corners by building up too high. Here's how it should look. Now to finish off the rim of the pot from above, to make the whole thing just look a little more proportional, I'm going to fill in these gaps here. So these flat faces are too thick. Like this, so you can see it joins up and it kind of squares off the shape a little bit as well. Then I want to build out these two long sections here. And I'm also going to fill in these gaps as well. So it kind of becomes too thick all the way around. Here's how the top of the pot should look from above. 
Now we need to add in our windows and floors and I'm going to start by breaking up my floor space here and I find it's easiest to break in my windows by looking from the inside. I'm going to be using some stripped dark oak logs for my floor but of course you can use whatever you'd like. This pot house has three stories so it's nice and spacious. And if you are using logs keep in mind that you want them all facing the same direction. Now that the first floor is in, we're going to mark in our first window. So we've got our gap at the front of the door here, and I'm just going to go to the back wall and break in a too high window like this and fill it in with some white stained glass panes. Now to work on the next level, I want to add a roof made out of mud brick slabs. And you can see this is on the top layer of the block above the window. Now if you're not in 1.19, you can replace these perhaps with some jungle wood slabs, that would look nice. Or even just some spruce slabs. It won't have the same colour, but it'll give it a nice rustic feel. I'm going to leave a little gap here for my ladder. And then just fill the rest in. Once again I'm going to fill in the floor here with my stripped dark oak logs and then we can add in our windows. Now you don't have to have your dark oak logs facing the same direction as you had on the lower story, that is up to you. I think it can be quite fun to have the floors facing different directions on each level. And you'll also notice that the higher you go up in the pot the more space you have in your build as the pot flares out and gets bigger. All right, that's the floor filled in and I'm actually going to be putting my ladder here now so when I add in my next floor I'm going to leave the gap here but first we're going to add the windows. So this is the back side here and we know that because the ladder is at the front so we've got the front here. I'm going to not put a window at the back but I'm going to have one on the left and the right, two high and one block above the floor and I'm going to have one at the front. And if you're unsure, you can always take a step outside of your build to check that you've got your sides right, or you could even mark them in, perhaps with a banner. So now that I've got my windows in, I'm going to go in with some more mud brick slabs, once again on the half slab above where we're working. I really like the texture and the colour of mud bricks. They work so well with the terracotta. The other thing is, of course, if you want to have a little bit more space inside your pot uh, when it comes to headroom, you can always leave out the slabs or even relocate your floors so instead of having three stories, you have just two. But I find that four is a good balance. Oh, and before I forget, I better leave my gap for my ladder. So I'm going to be moving one over each time when I'm placing my ladder here. Once again, I'll fill in with some dark oak logs. And then we can add in the final layer of windows. Now that the floor is in, I'm just going to go outside my pot to check which sides I'm on. So here is the front side. And I'm going to add a window here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it in to this gap here like this, too high, and then I'm going to use a little bit more terracotta to create the frame. So you can see I've built a little L shape up and around it. And then I'm going to rotate round to the back and do the same thing. And then fill it in with some glass. You can see these are diagonally opposite each other and I'll also add in my spot for my ladder and I might as well add in the ladders on my other floors. Now of course building this in survival you'll definitely want to light up as you go here you don't want any mob spawning inside your flower pot. I'm just gonna go to here for now 
and I'm gonna start adding in my floor so for this I'll go in with my mud bricks but then I'm going to be using some coarse dirt on the top because this is the top of the pot where the flowers going to be sitting Alright, back over to our ladder placement. I'll need to add in one terracotta just so I can bring my ladder up and then my dirt. And then I can fill in the whole of the top of the pot with coarse dirt. You can use regular dirt if you'd like. I like the slightly darker colour of the coarse dirt. You could even use rooted dirt which looks nice. It's just whatever you have on hand. A fun idea to customise this pot would be repl to replace the coarse dirt with some podzol or mycelium and then build a mushroom on top of your flower pot instead of a flower. That would look really cute. You'll also notice that the dirt is sitting one block down from the edge of the pot and that helps with the flower pot look of the build. And there we go, our floors are in, our windows are in, and now we can get decorating. Now the first thing I want to add for details is some mossy cobble and cobblestone. And I'm going to just add some little rock formations around the sides of the build. Once again, it adds to that rustic, whimsical look that we're trying to achieve here. And you can add as much or as little of this as you'd like. So I've got a formation like this at the front. And you can see that it is coming right to the edge of the door here. And then I'm going to have one more on this side. Alright, so this is going to kind of tie in with the moss we've got going in. I'll have one here. Now I've got a lot more mossy cobble than cobble, but the distribution is up to you. I'm then going to go in with some glow lichen and place that around here as well on top of the mossy cobble and the cobble, as well as onto the walls of the pot. And coming around the front as well. Just like that. I also want to place in a little bit more glow lichen just on the other sides of the pot, so I'll have a little bit here. Not quite as much as where I have my cobble. And I'll have a little bit here as well. Now we want to create our doorway, so I'm coming round to the front of the build here. I'm going to start by placing in some dark oak here and here, and you can see that I've come one out from the build here. And I'm going to go in with three more stripped dark oak logs to fill in the floor. Now we want to create a circular shape, so I'm going to use some trapdoors to come three high up the sides. Like that. And then I'll go in with some more dark oak stairs upside down, then right way up, and then a dark oak log in the center like this. Now we need to fill in the walls. So we've got gaps here which I'm going to fill in from the outside with some spruce trapdoors. On the side it'll just be a too high gap because we've got this cobble here. And then I'm going to come inside the build and I'm going to put trapdoors in the corners on top of each of these uh, stairs here. And then I'm going to come back outside to fill in these gaps. So you can see that this adds a little bit of dimension to the build. And I'll also place in my door looking from the outside so it's set a little bit back from these trapdoors. I'm also going to place some flower pots and some alliums and this is the kind of flower we'll be building up in our flower pot. Next we're going to add some window decorations and we'll begin with a loom to create some window shutters. For this you'll need a brown banner, two black dye which will create a cross and then a border pattern with and then two brown dye and we'll just repeat that a cross and then a border. Now to copy these over if you're building this in survival, you can just place this banner next to a plain brown banner in a crafting table and you will get more of the same. 
I'm going to place these beside each window and I'm also going to place a mud brick stair with a pot and an allium on top. And you can see that with these designs on the banner it really does look like a window shutter. Now I'm just using one banner here, but if you like the look of two, you could do that as well. And I'll just have a fly around to check that I haven't missed any on my windows. And we can have a look at how it's going so far. Awesome, all the windows are decorated. Next up, I want to add some little mushrooms to this pot. So I'm going to start at the front here and I'm going to build my smallest mushroom on this side. So I'm just going to place in a smooth sandstone here and then come up on the diagonal like this and then one more up on top. And then I want to surround this block with my red mushroom blocks. Our first little mushroom in. For our next mushroom, it's going to be a bit bigger and I'm coming to the right hand side now. And I want to locate this block here. So I find it easiest to find the top part of the window and then just come over to this block. Then I'm going to come up two diagonally like this. And once again, but I'll leave it connected this time. And I'll build one higher so I have something to build my mushroom on. This time I'm going to surround the whole thing in a square like this. And then build a little plus on top. Here's how it looks. I want to add one more of these larger mushrooms to the build so that way you can see a mushroom from any side. So I'm going around to the right hand corner here and I'm going to find this gap. It's the one more towards the back and I'm one block above. And once again I'll just use the smooth sandstone to create my stem and then add my mushroom in. Very cute. Now we're going to begin the flower. Now this is quite complicated so just take your time and if you're having any trouble feel free to leave a comment or join my discord and I'd be happy to help you out. We're starting with the stem here and we're going to use green concrete powder, lime terracotta and string. I'm going to locate the center of my pot by lining myself up with the center of this side here and then I will look down and line myself up here. I need to come one block over and then I'm going to place in a block. Now if you're in creative you can fly up and have a look or in survival you could use some scaffolding to come up above your pot and check out what you've got. Okay now we're going to go in and mix the green concrete powder and the lime terracotta. This is just about creating a randomized texture and it's up to you how you eventually create it but I'll show you how I do as I go along. The reason we've got the string is so we want, if we want to have some floating green concrete powder, we can place that in like this. And then I'm just gonna keep going around. Now the idea here is that we want to create a slight curve to our stem. So I'll be curving mine out and up that way. And I also want to, to, to start thicker at the bottom and then get thinner as we go up. So we've got this little shape here and then I'm going to come on top of that to create another little L shape. Place a concrete powder on top. And it's just about breaking it down into sections. Use some string here. My floating concrete powder. And the string really isn't noticeable from a distance. And like with everything, when you're randomizing and creating difference in textures, it always helps to take a step back and look at it from different angles and just take your time. You can always change things as you go along. I'm gonna rotate round to the back now. We've got this section here. I'm gonna come up like this. I'm going to start using less of the green concrete powder as I get towards the top. You can see we've got our slight curve happening. 
and we're actually almost there with this part of the build. We just need to add the top of the store and that'll be two more lime terracotta. Let's take a step back and look at it. Next we're going to be again adding in the leaves and for this we'll just be using lime terracotta. The reason we mixed in some of this green concrete powder was to provide some contrast. But now it's time to work the leaves so I'm going to start by creating a little L shape here and this is on the right hand side of the front of the flower. Then I'm going to build up three high and the aim here is we're going to create a diagonal facing leaf that's going to curve over a little bit. I'm going to build up three high here. We'll just work on this kind of face of it for starters. So you can see I've gone up in these two patterns and I've connected them with these two blocks here. I'm going to go up one higher here and create a little L shape. And you can see I'm coming out on the diagonal each time here. Go up two, then across one, and then I'm going to come down one. So you can see when you're looking from this side, it's got a nice curvy shape. Now I need to rotate round to the other side and add a little bit of bulk and dimension here. So we've got our L shape that goes up like this. Then we're going to add two blocks to here, one block up here, block here, and a block here. So here's how it should look from this side. And that's our first leaf finished. For the next leaf, I'm at the front of the build now and I'm going to rotate round to the right hand side. And this next leaf is going to come out straight from here. I'm going to start by creating a little base like this to build on top of. And I'll do this section of the leaf first. So I'm going to build two on top of here. And don't worry that it's joining up to the stalk of the flower. Um, that'll just make it have a bushier appearance. I'm going to go up three again. Then four. One, two, three, four. Like that. And then one more grouping of four. One, two, three, four. Finally, for this section, I'll just come one up on the diagonal. Now, if you're building these leaves and it doesn't turn out exactly as mine is here, that's all right. Each leaf can be a little bit different. So I'm going to come up one on the diagonal here from this block. Then I'm going to go up one, two, three, four. So it should sit one above here. I'm going to come up again four blocks. One, two, three, four. So it sits two above here. And then I'm just going to go up two blocks so it's sitting level with that last block we placed. For the final section here before we add the curving part of our leaf, I'm going to go up. So I'm sitting one below here so that's four blocks and you can see that's one below that block. Then I'm going to go up another four. One, two, three, four. Once again, I'm sitting one below and then two like this. And then I'll just finish off by placing one more block in here. And you can see that it's put our leaf on a little bit of an angle. Now to finish off the top curve of the flower, I'm going to place one more lime here. And I'm going to come forward and it's going to get a little bit thinner towards the top. So I'm going to go across two here, come up and go across two again. Then I'm going to sit one on top of here and come out another two. And then I'll come down one on the diagonal you can see it's creating a nice little curvy shape. We'll also have a look at this leaf from the other side so you can see what it looks like and you can make any, any adjustments if need be. Add some blocks in, take some away and just create a look that you're happy with. I think this looks good. I might just add one block down here to break up the squareness. We have two more leaves to go and we're going to work on this next one here which is sitting on the corner. So I'm just going to attach it like this just to the corner here and then I'm going to start working on this side first. So I'll build up two high in the very corner and then I'll come up four high. And the idea here is we just want to be connecting things as we go along. So I'll then add in some blocks here, come up three high. Another three, two, and then come in at an angle. So it should look like this. Now I'm going to add some blocks to the other side. So I'll come out on a diagonal from here and go up another three, uh, sorry, another two. So we have a height of three and I'll fill in this little gap. So it's, it's one above. Then I'm going to come up one, two, three, four, and fill in this little gap up to the same height. 
I'm going to place a block in here, come up too high here, and here's what we've got so far. I'm also going to come down on the diagonal to fill in this gap. Now we really want to thin off the top of our leaf, so I'm going to come out this way by two, I'm going to go up on a diagonal, and out across, coming down on a diagonal again, and I'm going to use a block on a diagonal here, and then one more block on a diagonal. Here's how it should look. This is a slightly bigger leaf. This next leaf is straight on like the one on the other side and I'm going to be placing it here like this, creating a little diamond shape. Then on this outer edge I'm going to go up another three, come up, go up three, come up on a diagonal, go up five, one, two, three, four, oh sorry, four high like that. So we've got four, three, four, then I'll go up two and then one more like this. Now to widen our leaf, I'm going to come up here, three, uh, another two blocks so it's three high and sits one below this. I'm then also going to come up from this bit that's sticking out, so I'm sitting two above this block here. I'll then come another two down and come up, so I am sitting one below the top of this block here. And I'll do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to go one above, so there's four blocks visible from the inside like this. To make it a bit wider, I'm going to come up again here, but I'm only going to start at two blocks above. And I'll sit up too high, connect it coming out like this, and then go up three high. Once again, I'll place one here and then come up so I'm sitting one above, above this block, so that's another four high, and then just two blocks here. Here's how it's looking. Now we need to add the curve. For the curve, I've got my diagonal block here already, and I'm just gonna build a little square like this. Now it's gonna thin out again here, so I'm just gonna place three blocks coming out from that square we just built, and then one coming down a, on a diagonal. Here's how it should look so far. We've got our stalk and leaves in now and we're ready to start adding in our flower. I'm going to build the base of my flower out of purple wool and then I'm going to randomize the texture. For something like this it certainly is easier to start with a base and then add in your textures. So I've built a 3x3 square centered on top of our stalk. Then I am going to come out like this and build five across and then three out from there. And I'll do that on the other side as well. We're just creating a sphere here. Now on these two sides, we've already got two of our blocks so I can connect them up and put in my three. Just like that. And now we can get working on building up our sphere. So I'm gonna build up one more grouping of three on here and extend that out to fill in the corners and you can see looking at it that this is the same shape that we created on the underside here so I'm going to build up one two three four five one two three four five so we've got a total of five here and then connect across the top create a square and I'll do this on each face uh, adding four on top that'll leave you with squares like this which you can then bring forward and fill in with your purple wool Here's how it should look. Now I'll find the center here and add three like this on the corners. And all that's left to do for the sphere is to fill in the top. So here I'll add three on top of each of the sides. And that's just to create this shape that we're aiming to. I'll then build a square here, once again creating those little shapes that we had to begin with. 
and I'll be left with a 3x3 square to fill in at the top. Here's how it looks. Now comes the randomizing. Now this can take a little bit of time and we'll be using purple concrete, purple concrete powder, blocks of amethyst and then amethyst clusters in various sizes. And I've also got some string for placing my concrete powder. The trick here is to just place in and break blocks, taking step backs all the time to see what you like. I'm gonna build both out and um, place in my blocks and I want to get a relatively even distribution of my amethyst and purple concrete and concrete powder. But I do want to fluff up the shape so it's not just a plain old uh, sphere. I find it easiest to start with one block and uh, place it around in different locations and you can always change these um, and but I find it a lot easier than trying to randomize my my block placement as I go. I also try not to have things lining up like this where there's blocks right above each other. I always like to have things on an angle. I find it looks much better. Also to achieve that fluffy look, having things on diagonals like this makes them look almost as if they're floating away. Now I'm going to go in with some concrete powder and I'll need my string here. Oh, whoops, I broke my string. Don't forget to add some randomized textures to the top. If you're placing in your purple concrete here, you'll need to use some string. Okay, so the shape is starting to develop now. I'm going to add a few more blocks to the top here. But you can see what I mean about just taking your time and how this is starting to break up the spherical shape. Once I've, um, I am pretty happy with uh, how I've randomized these textures and I've placed in my blocks, I'm going to go in with my amethyst crystals, which will also fluff up the look. Let's start adding some in now. I can always switch back to placing in blocks. Try to use a mixture of different sizes. Um, this once again adds to the fluffy look of the flower. And place them at all sorts of different angles, not forgetting about the bottom. I'm 
Now I'll switch to a different size and keep going. You can really use the amethyst crystals to add height and dimension here. Alright, now I'm going to switch to some medium ones. I find the small uh, crystals to be just a little too small, um, but uh, if you if you think they are a great addition and you have some on hand, you could definitely go and add them in. That's the wonderful thing about this build is it's very customizable. I'm liking how it's looking. I need some more amethyst crystals up here. looking good. Then I'm going to add some to the bottoms of here. Maybe there. Let's see, I'd like one underneath this block, although unfortunately I can. I might even replace this one with wool because I'd really like to have an amethyst crystal hanging there and I can put some more concrete powder elsewhere in the build. Gonna go in with some more blocks, creating some more angles. And just keep adding dimension and texture and shaping this flower. And if you build more than one of these, it's always a great thing with this randomized texture that each one is gonna be different. It'd be boring if all the flowers were the same. I think I'd like one coming out in a diagonal from here. I think this is starting to look really good. Another important perspective to consider is how your build looks from underneath, because that's where you'll be seeing the most of the flower. And I can see that there are too many large crystals in this part of the build when I'm looking from below. So I'm going to remove that crystal and I might need to remove one more. Let's replace this one here with a slightly smaller crystal. I can also see that I don't have many amethyst blocks in this part of the build. So I'm going to replace and add some of those in, maybe one there. And since they're such a nice texture, I can have quite a few of these. I might put one in here as well. And then I can add a concrete powder into here. Let's head back down and have a look. And you can see that's really made a big difference with the bottom of the build. I'm going to add some more randomized textured blocks here as I'm noticing that I need some of that. That looks good. Maybe another purple concrete in here. That looks nice. And then I want to add another diagonal block coming up this way with the purple concrete. Looking good. Maybe one over here, perhaps even with some amethyst. And I want another one on the top. I'll use some purple concrete here. A few more crystals to add and I think we'll just about have it. Looking good from all sides, I'd say. Now for a few more details. So this flower looks fantastic as it is, but if you'd like to add a little something special and have access to frog lights, you could place replace some of the wool with some purple glass and place frog lights in behind. They have a lighter color, which works really well for the build. And um, they give the flower a magical glow, which looks really pretty at night. 
Now remember if you are trying to place things in a diagonal it can get a bit tricky as you've got concrete powder and stuff around so you might need to do some breaking and placing and you'll also need to remember to fill in any gaps like this but taking a little time to do that is totally worth it. And to make the glass feel more at home you can add a little glass on top of the whole rest of the build and remembering that since the glass is see-through you'll keep all of the wonderful texture and pattern that you've put into the build. I'm going to add a few more pieces of frog lights here and here, there, some more glass, and really give this flower a whimsical touch. Don't forget you can always break blocks if you don't like the placement when looking from other angles. Those little changes are what make a build really special. And with something like this it just takes time and finding something that you like. And if you're having trouble finding placement for a block, perhaps it's a sign that you don't even need one there. And I might rotate it round and put it up here instead. I've got a bit of a diagonal here so I might break that up by um, moving this block up this way. And I think I might place it behind here instead, checking it's not directly above that other block. I'll need to move this little crystal just out the way I can even place it on top of the glass. That really does look magical and at night it'll look even better. I'm just finishing up adding a few more details to our pot here. You can see I've draped some azalea leaves down the side of the pot and I've got these placed um, all over the edge and you can see that I've also placed some lichen hanging down from the rim of the pot. Inside the pot I've placed a few smaller versions of my uh, um, alien flower and I've got the azalea leaves coming back into the pot a little bit because you've got to remember this is kind of like a balcony for the pot house. You can come up here and visit. Around the pot I've stuck to red, purple and white flowers which pulls in the colours of the build and I've used some grass. Now usually I avoid using tall grass around my bills as it can block out the shape of the build but since this is such a large pot having some tall grass really adds to the proportion. I've also added a few azalea trees and a little gravel path. Now you can place this build in any biome, but I've placed my flower pot house in a birch biome as I like the way the light wood contrasts with the darker colour of the pot. I also like the vibrancy here, and you can see that I've used some moss to hide some frog lights, and there is only a little bit of difference between the colour of the grass and the moss. You can see that I've blended in the moss hiding the lights by having some moss around the bottom of the pot, and this works well as we've got moss growing up the side of the pot. A few more details I included, I brought in some green frogs and I went with green because they have a very storybook looking frog, there are some bees flying around and I've hidden some spore blossoms in the nearby trees so that way you get this magical particle effect all around your magical flower pot. I hope you enjoyed creating this flower pot house and flower today. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing if you haven't already. It really means a lot to me and helps me out more than you know. And don't forget to join my Discord to share some pictures of your build. I'd love to see you. I'll see you in another video.